In the last video, we saw that if you have a space x and a covering space y over x, then given a path downstairs, you can find a path upstairs that projects to it given any initial condition. So if the path downstairs, let's call it gamma, starts at x and y upstairs is in the pre-image under the covering map of x, so let's call the covering map P, then you can find a path gamma tilde that projects down to gamma and starts at y. In this video I want to show you that that lift gamma tilde is uniquely determined by its initial condition y and the proof uh, I want to give actually generalizes to prove a more useful statement uh, that we'll use elsewhere in the course. So let me tell you what that statement is. Let uh, y mapping to x be a covering space Let T be a connected space. So in our example, T is going to be the interval. Um, uh, let F mapping T to X be a continuous map like gamma. Then um, two lifts F one tilde and F two tilde of T to Y. So the lifts of F um, are equal for all T in T if and only if they are equal for some t and t. So in this case, uniqueness of path lifting, t is going to be the interval, and we're going to check that they're equal at the very beginning, and that will tell us they're equal everywhere. So you get a unique lift. Let me just remind you the condition that F tilde is a lift is just saying that if you compose F tilde with the projection P you get back the map F. Okay so for the proof Well, we only need to check one of the two directions, right? Because if um, if they agree everywhere, then in particular they agree somewhere, as long as t is non-empty. Um, so we just need to prove that if they agree somewhere, they agree everywhere. So what we're going to do, we're going to let S be the set of points in T where the two lifts agree. So we need to prove, I claim, that S is open and its complement is open, i.e. S is closed as well. And I claim this is enough because T is connected. So these are two disjoint open sets whose union is T. So if one of them is not empty, so if there is some point where they agree, then the other one has to be empty. So they agree everywhere. So um, S and T minus S are disjoint open sets uh, whose union is T. can't
both you know to because t is connected so as soon as we know there's some point in s we know everything is in s okay so we need to prove s is open and closed so here's a new page let's draw a picture here's t Here's little t some point in t. Here's x, and this point little x is going to be f of t, f of this map. And upstairs over x, we've got this covering space. And then we've got these two possible lifts f1 tilde. T tilde of x. Now, from the definition of a covering space, we know there are elementary neighborhoods in x. So there's one you know, that cover the whole of x. So there's one containing little x. So let's call that w. And then upstairs in the covering space, I'm going to take two different elementary sheets, one centered at f1 tilde t and the other centered at f2 tilde t, which could well be the same point, of course. We don't know. Um, so let me do them in E. So let V1, V2 be <coughs> elementary sheets lying over uh, W. Now, maybe I didn't say it explicitly, but by now you should be used to the fact that whenever I say map, I mean a continuous map. So these lifts are continuous maps. Um, so because of that, there exists an open set W, no, uh, U, sorry. Um, maybe I'll call it U1. In T, containing little t, such that you know, little t is in U1 and uh, F1 tilde U1 is a subset of the elementary sheet V1. And similarly, there's an open U2 containing T such that F2 tilde U2 is contained in V2. And I'm just going to let U be the open set which is the intersection of those two. Okay, now that we've set everything up, what do we actually want to do? We want to prove that this set S is open and that its complement is open. So let's suppose that this point little t is in t minus s, say. So if t is in t minus s, then I claim the whole open set U is in T minus S. I remember U contains little t, so that means every point has an open neighborhood that's contained in T minus S. Every point of T minus S has an open neighborhood that's contained in T minus S, which tells us, so this implies T minus S is open. So why do I claim this? Well, um, what is the set T minus S? It's the set of points where the two lifts disagree. So the fact that little t is in T minus S means 
f1 tilde t is not equal to f2 tilde t. But that means, if we look at the picture, that these two blue sets, these two elementary sheets, are disjoint. They're not the same elementary sheet. Okay, the elementary sheets are different path components, the pre-image of W. So they're, they're disjoint if they're, if they're not um, oriented the same point, the same pre-image. So this implies um, f1 tilde of t prime is not equal to f2 tilde of t prime for all t in u. Right, because you know, being inside, sorry, all t prime in u. So being inside u means f1 tilde of t prime is in v1 and f2 tilde of t prime is in v2 and they're disjoint. Okay, so this shows that the complement of S is open. So if, on the other hand, T is in S, then remember this means F1 tilde T equals F2 tilde T. So actually the elementary sheets V1 and V2 coincide in this case. Are equal. So let's just call that V. So I don't need to write a subscript there. By definition of a covering space, there exists a local inverse Q from W to V. In other words, a map that goes from the base back up to the sheet such that P composed Q is the identity on W. So if I go up and then down, I get back where I started. And Q composed P, at least restricted to this set V, is the identity on V. So if I start in this sheet, V up here, and I project down and then I go back up using this local inverse Q, I end up where I started. How am I going to use this? Well, let's consider some point T prime in U. Recall U was this set which was mapped into V1 by F1 tilde and into V2 by F2 tilde. So now F1 tilde and F2 tilde are just sending it to the set we were calling V. So we can apply this formula here, Q of P of F tilde 1 T prime equals, well, the Q and the P cancel, I just get F 1 tilde T prime. But I can also look, P compose F 1 tilde equals f because f one tilde is a lift of f it's the definition of a lift so this bit in the brackets is actually equal to q of f of t tilde uh, t prime in the other direction i could also say this is equal to q of p of f2 tilde t prime by the same reasoning because f2 tilde is a lift of f. And then again, using qp equals identity, that tells me this is equal to f2 tilde of t prime. So f1 tilde and f2 tilde agree on u. And that tells us s is open. Right, every point, little t, 
in T has an open neighborhood U such that if T was in S, then that U is contained in S. Okay, so let's just quickly recap. If we consider the set of points where the two lifts agree, we've shown that that set is open and its complement is open because T is a connected set, that means they can't both be non-empty. So if we assume there is at least one point where they agree, they agree everywhere.